I'm Officer John Brown with the Columbus Police Department, Community Liaison Unit. I've been with the Police Department for 27 years, be 28 years at the end of this year. I was born in Columbus, raised here. I went to Columbus Public Schools before I attended high school. Uh, my family's from Columbus. Um, in fact, my family was one of the first African-American families that moved into central Columbus. Back then, African-Americans could only live in two locations. One was the American edition, and the other one was Flytown. My great-grandfather was the Columbus, excuse me, was the police officer for the American edition. At that time, the American edition was a little separate than Columbus uh, Police Department, so my grandfather patrolled that area. So I prepared some stats for you today uh, in regards to uh, two of the major crimes that the Columbus Police Department are dealing with right now, felonious assaults and um, homicides. And for those who don't know what a felonious assault is, a felonious assault is a assault that will result in serious physical injury, prolonged serious physical injury, but not death. Okay, so last year, 2022, the Columbus Police Department had 2,043 felonious assault cases that they worked. This year, at this time, as of Friday, we are already at um, 1,567 felonious assault cases. So we are on track to either meet last year's caseload or beat last year's caseload. At this point in time, six, excuse me, 43% uh, of those cases have been solved. 1,048 of those cases, the victims were black. That's 68% of our felonious assault cases. 750 suspects were black. 863 are unknown. So that number could actually rise as those investigators are actually investigating those cases and identifying the suspects in those cases. The ages on our felonious assaults range from one years old to 100 this year. 366 of those cases involved victims being shot. Our homicide rate or homicide cases. Last year, we had 101 homicides here in Columbus. The year prior to that, we had the highest number of homicides in our city's history at 153. That's 2021. This year, we got 113. So we are on track to either meet or beat that stat. 70% of our homicides, excuse me, 90% of our homicides have been solved already. So we do a pretty good job of solving the homicides here in Columbus. 77 of those victims of our homicide this year are black. At this point, we've identified 90 suspects from those homicides that are black. 98 of those victims were shot. Starting to see a trend here. We've got an issue with guns here. Starting to see a trend here. Our homicide suspects, I'm sorry, our homicide victims' ages range from, at, we had 10 homicide victims. We had 10 homicide victims, and this, this is baffling to me, 13 to 17 years of age. 13, 13 years, a 13-year-old. In fact, I was the officer who arrested a 13-year-old who shot a 15-year-old at Easton a couple of weeks ago. Now I was working special duty, got the call, ran over, checked the, uh, a restaurant and found him hiding in a bathroom with a gun, a 13-year-old. 18 of those homicide suspects were between the ages of 18 and 21. 36 of those homicide victims were between the ages of uh, 22 to 30. 18 of those homicide victims were between the ages of 31 to 40. 
are homicide suspects. 18 of those homicide suspects were between the ages of 13 to 17, like the young man I found hiding in the bathroom. 29 of those suspects were between the ages of 18 to 21. 37 of those homicide suspects were between the ages of 22 and 30. 18 of those homicide suspects were between the ages of 31 to 40. 68 percent of our homicide victims here in Columbus were black. Yet, Columbus only has a population of, of, of blacks as 29. I know I threw a lot of numbers at you. A lot of numbers. But they're not just numbers. They're names. These are people. These are our, our Columbus family members. How many here, has anyone here lost a, a member to violence? Have you? Has anyone? You don't remember as a number. You remember them as a name. On August the 25th, 2012, got a call from my wife. Her younger brother was shot and killed, leaving a bar. I'm a Columbus police officer. I'm supposed to protect him and my wife, yet I failed. That's what these numbers are. They're failures. At some point, there should have been some intervention. And I failed. I wish I could have provided some type of comfort for him to come visit me, then go find his entertainment in a bar. Because nothing good happens after midnight. Nothing. So how can we intervene? How can we reduce these numbers? How can the police reduce these numbers? Well, we can start enforcing the laws that are on our books. Because when we enforce those laws that are on our books, a little bit stricter enforcement, we're coming in contact with these individuals. Hopefully we're getting guns off the street as we're making arrests, simple arrests that that individual was on his way to, to, to commit. We can get involved with community engagements. The Columbus Police Department is doing a very good job of trying to diversify this agency. So you're starting to see our the police department trying to reach kids or individuals from within our community instead of going outside of our community to have those officers patrol that community. What can family do? Family can get involved. Those family members can start asking questions. Hey, where are you going? Who are you with? Who are you going to be with? What are those parents' names? I like to have a conversation with them. Make sure your loved ones are safe as they're leaving your house. Find out who these kids are spending time with. Ask them questions. Hold them accountable. Set curfews. Set boundaries. Discipline them when they break those curfews and boundaries. And what can the community do? The community can report suspicious activity. We, you, you are our eyes and ears. We respond to you. So if you're seeing something that is out of place, report it. You might be saving someone's loved one. You guys, any, have any questions? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Brown, for telling us this statistic yes. that makes all of us really shocked yes i mean we heard the news all the time for someone got killed and yes. all that but putting those numbers together in in this way is really shocking the question that i have is what can we do as a community that can prevent this sort of thing to continue to happen and if there is a program in place to for this sort of things what we're going to ask the community to do is if you're seeing suspicious activity reported if you have loved ones you believe that are um you know not on the uh the straight and narrow the city has a program right now where we are actually 
identifying individuals that are high risk, that could be our next shooters. The police department is going out with a uh, crime reduction team. They're civilians. They go out and address this individual. You go to his residence and say, hey, you know, we see that you were on the wrong path. And then they will tell them, if you continue on this path, you're going to see a lot of strict enforcement. We're going to focus a lot of our enforcement on you. So either you change your behavior or, you know, you're going to continue to the path where you're going to be in prison. Then they also offer them resources that can help them turn their, their, their life around. And that's where the uh, uh, crime uh, prevention team comes into place because they provide those resources for them. Let's say they need transportation. They find them transportation. They find them employment. They find resources for them if they have um, uh, they're ha recently had a child, then they'll get them uh, child care. They will get them diapers, formula, anything they can do to get this person to change their life around. So we do have a program that is in place and it's going on right now. And I personally thank you, Mr. Brown, for the information you give us uh, about this situation. My question is, you earlier said that um, some of the things that you guys do are community engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, Somali community is large community, mm -hmm. uh, African-American community. Mm -hmm. um, however, they're not represented in police force, in Columbus uh, police force. What are you guys doing to at least hire them, recruit them, so they can help you get engaged with the community? That's a good question. Recruitment team has been focusing on uh, Somali events as uh, they come about so they can get out and um, provide them with uh, the information about how to join the Columbus Police Department. Um, again, our new chiefs have been driven in trying to make sure that community that the officers are serving uh, looks like the community that the police officers have. We want to represent the community that we are serving. So we're doing a, a lot to engage with the Somali community to uh, get officers to I mean, get, get individuals to, to test for the police department as well as other communities, the Nepali community. We want that community to be well represented within this police department. My question here, <coughs> um, Officer Brown, you gave us um, statistics numbers, yes. and numbers do not lie. They mean something. They mean names. They mean individuals that are gone. For the past five years, at least as long as I can remember, um, the homicide rate in Columbus has not changed. It was even increasing every day. And the most people that are being murdered or dying through that process, majority of them um, is black people. And that doesn't happen in other communities, um, even in Columbus. So my question here is, does CPD cares only certain race in Columbus and do not care and ignore certain race? Or is this a failure uh, for the city of Columbus leadership, including the mayor, Mayor Ginther? Um, They've been crying every year, talking about TV, speaking on TV about the homicide rate and bringing it down, and nothing happens but just changing, replacing uh, the police chief, bringing new chief. Um, and I always wonder, does the Columbus police chief, his job is to stop the homicide? Is this just one individual? This has to become a culture within CPD, the Columbus Police Department, as a whole, needs to uh, focus on 
um, stopping homicide regardless of the zip code it is happening. If it is 43211, which is the worst um, Linden area, or if it is um, zip codes that are close to like Gahanna or Westerville. Thank you. I can tell you this, when our chief took over, we did drive the homicide rate down uh, to 101 from, you know, 150, I believe it was 153, 152. Um, we are trying to focus on driving those numbers down. Uh, we have um, extended the overtime, the moonlight special. I can tell you this, if it wasn't for me working that moonlight special, I would not have been able to have caught that young man, that 13-year-old young man at, at Easton. So uh, we are uh, extending um, overtime so, off so we can get more officers out there on the street to try to uh, um, catch these young men. You talked about um, prevention mm -hmm. and how there are actually regular civilians and doing that stuff like that. What about repeat offenders? Most of the time, some people that go out and commit homicides and stuff like that are repeat offenders and things like that. Do you guys plan on working on your, what is it called, like second chance programs and stuff like that when it comes to convicts that just got out, like rehabilitating them and stuff like that? Unfortunately, the Columbus Police Department deals with enforcement. Mm -hmm. So that will be something that will be addressed through our judicial system. Okay. So maybe our judges or... Um, the um, probation department, they would have to be able to address that. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.